Hey, I'm Jacob Vernick here today representing New Blue. Today I'm presenting from One Source Video Studio in Hazlitt, New Jersey. I'm excited to introduce you to the New Blue Captivate. This product is designed to solve all of your live production needs. While our primary focus is graphics, we'll also walk through ways you can use Captivate to be your all-in-one control room for any live events you might have. It's perfect for sports, news, government meetings, corporate communications, and so much more. We are headquartered out in San Diego, California. In 2006, New Blue emerged as a trailblazer in the post-production plug-in world with the launch of New Blue Post. This software swiftly became a leader in video effects, transitions, and titling for consumer editing. These plugins were lauded for their user-friendly design and robust capabilities, attracting professionals and broadcasters alike through integration with platforms such as Avid, Adobe, DaVinci Resolve, and more. Responding to industry needs, New Blue deepened its commitment to live video technology in 2016 with the introduction of New Blue Live marking the beginning of its foray into on-air graphics for live broadcasts. Since then, New Blue's products, notably Captivate, have become fixtures in live event streaming, solidifying its reputation as an industry leader. We're going to walk through a whole host of features that make Captivate the right tool for any of your live events. Throughout this session, we're going to spend a little extra time highlighting three key features of Captivate. Number one, our one-of-a-kind After Effects integration enabling you to render real-time graphics from Adobe directly in Captivate. Number two, our scoreboard tool and data integrations for powering your scoreboard graphics. And number three, our comprehensive API that allows integration into BitFocus Companion, ATEM, and other tools you probably have. So let's get into this demo. A quick note, I will be demoing using Captivate Broadcast today. Not all of the features I show are available in Captivate Present and Sport. A more in-depth explanation of what is and isn't included in each version can be found on our website, newbluefx.com. What you're looking at here on my screen is an empty project. I wanna show you how quick and easy it is to get going with some graphics just for your project in a couple of seconds. This will work on Mac and Windows computers. I'm running it on a MacBook Pro M3 chip right now. Whatever computer you have, it should be good. Our requirements are on our website for what you need to operate this. Over here on the left-hand side, we are looking at our project panel. This is where all of our graphics that we're going to use in an individual project are going to live. We've got our preview window and our program monitor right here to see what graphics are going out live or in preview. I can select how I want to output as well right down here. So HDMI, NDI, if I had a SDI connected as well, I can output key and fill over an SDI as well. We have direct integrations into OBS too, so you can pull these graphics right in. Down here we have our properties, and when I start adding graphics, you'll see more about what this is. It's our way to be able to add some data to any of our live graphics. If I come down here to add new item, this is one place where I can start adding things into my project panel. You can see a few options here. I can create a new titler graphic from scratch. I can bring in After Effects. We'll get a little bit more into that later. Uh, live video and audio, importing MP4s, importing audio sources. This is where I can bring in anything I've created outside of Captivate. But where I'm going to start is in our library of graphics, and we have over a thousand graphics templates available to you. So I'm just gonna grab a lower third real quick from our sunset graphics package, gonna bring that into my project, and then I'm gonna come up here and grab a crawl as well, just so that I have a lower third and some sort of ticker here at the bottom of our screen. I'm gonna close out of our library, and now you can see, right, when I click on play over here, and I click on play over here, I've got my graphics ready to go. But I have to imagine I don't want this lower third overlaying on top of this crawl. So let me stop these, click on preview right here, and I can move my graphics all around. So I've got my lower third up here now. They're gonna, it's gonna render out, and then I can click right here on play, and we've got graphics looking much better. But we can also make it so that the values are going to be different, right? I wanna change maybe the color of this crawl. So I'm gonna take it out of program, put it into preview, 
And down here in our properties panel, I was talking about this a little bit a moment ago. This is where I can change the data. So I can change what the message is saying in the crawl, or I can change any of the colors, right? So I'm gonna come in here, click on background color, and I'm gonna change it to uh, the color of the lower third, right? And now I've got my branded version of all of my graphics ready to go. I can come down here into my values grid, and this is where I could add more values to this crawl, right? So say I have a bunch of news stories. I wanna use some sort of XML, RSS reader. Just as an example, I'm just gonna copy and paste this sample text a couple of times. And now I can create a sequence of these graphics, right? So I can come over here, click on uh, add to sequence, and all of these graphics are going to play in a row, right? So you can see right here, these are all of my values, added them into a sequence. And when I clicked on play, all of these values are just going to repeat. But as I mentioned before, say you're not a huge fan of everything about this lower third, right? I can come in here, click on edit. And when you click on edit, it's going to open up the title designer. This is where I have full control over each individual element of this graphic, right? Say these lines aren't really doing it for me. I can come in here and delete any of these lines. I can come in here and this is where I can adjust the font. So if you have specific fonts for your brand, you can update them to make sure that we are using exactly what you want us to use. This is also where you can adjust any of the transition effects, right? So if you have specific transitions that you wanna use, we have a massive library of transitions. You can see them right here. We have a split transition on this. If you come over to this side and you go into our transitions library, this is where you can see exactly the transitions that you're going to use, right? So if I click into here and I hover over it, you'll now see that the, the name is going to update in a different way. I can select, you know, vault up. Any of these different transitions can be applied and you can stack transitions as well. So if you want to have multiple transition effects on a single asset, you can do that as well. Let's say our title designer isn't your cup of tea. Say you've been using After Effects your whole life and you want to continue designing all of your motion graphics in there for play out in Captivate. That brings us into point number one that we want to highlight today, which is our After Effects integration. So if I created my lower third in After Effects, and I'll come over here into After Effects and show you I've got a lower third created here. It animates on, it fades off. I can come over here into Captivate, add a new item, come over here to After Effects Composition, and bring this into my project. It'll ask me which I want to bring in, which uh, uh, composition I want to bring in from After Effects. I'll click on Import Composition, and voila. There is my graphic that I created in After Effects that I can now use in my production in Captivate. It's as simple as that. The real key to this integration is not that you can just bring the graphics in, it's that you can update the values of the graphics, right? So I can come over here into the name and change the name in the graphic in the live values and it will reanimate on screen. Same with the subtitle. I can apply the same values grid logic I showed a little bit earlier. That is just a basic example of our After Effects composition using a lower third, but again, any of the graphics that you create in After Effects can be brought over into Captivate to be played out in real time. We're gonna dive right now into point number two, which is about our data integrations. And the way I'm going to highlight this is using our embedded scoreboard tool. We've got some footage coming in now. Maybe we're gonna be a downstream keyer, right? We're gonna be bringing the live action into our game, and then we're going to be keying the graphics on top of it in Captivate. Over here on the left-hand side, I have a bunch of different graphics I might need. I've got some lower thirds, some score bugs, some player comparisons. Everything in this project panel is built based on layers, right? If something is above something else, that graphic is going to show on the top layer. What we wanna highlight when we start talking about sports is point number two, right? This is our data integration, specifically with our own embedded scoreboard tool, right? So if I come over here to my basketball scoreboard, I can click on play and put that graphic live on the screen. As you can see right here, this is where I'm able to drive the data connections. If I click right here uh, on any of these sources, once I turn this graphic off, it will give me the options for different sports that I can connect to. As you can see, right, the new tech data link, scoreboard, scoreboard tool, sportscast, spread, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down the line. What I've connected to right now is our basketball scoreboard. And that's what you can see down here. So let's put this back into program. Let's click on reset. That's gonna set us back to our default values. And now I can drive my scoreboard directly in Captivate. So it's not just the graphics, it's the data that is going into the graphics. I can click on plus two right here, 
plus three right here, take a timeout, and it's going to automatically populate those values. I've got game clock control right here. I've got shot clock control right here as well. So all of the things that you need for any of the sports that you are using this for, all available using our scoreboard tool directly in Captivate. Sometimes though, this is not going to be the same person who is doing the graphics. Sometimes you want somebody else who's doing the scoreboard tool to be, and somebody else to be updating what graphics are live. That's why we've made it so that you can kick this open and anyone on the same network can take this link, copy and paste it into their browser, or just click on open in local browser and anything that I change here will update on the graphic. I can also put on any of my other graphics, right? So I can have my stack comparisons or I can have my schedule announcement. And we're using our Flux Sports package right now. This has a lot of great new graphics that we just released, uh, including schedules, leaderboards, uh, you know, it's like standings graphics. And that brings us to our third point, which is all of the integrations that Captivate is capable of, right? Graphics need to play nicely with others. We need to be able to send the graphics to your switcher or be able to ingest your stream so that we can do some downstream keying, but we need to be able to integrate with everything that you need us to integrate with, right? So let's just start with some examples. We're gonna start by talking about our stream deck. You can tie it together so that it controls multiple things using the stream deck, I can power my graphics and my data using the scoreboard tool that we were just talking about. So I'm gonna send my graphic live, clicking on that basketball scoreboard, and now I can adjust the score using the Stream Deck as well, right? So again, if you want somebody on the sideline driving all of this, they can use the Stream Deck to just click some buttons, send the score up, take timeouts, toggle the game clock on and off, toggle the shot clock on and off, do everything that you need to do for the scoreboard. It's not just the data though, right? It is the ability to play on and off the graphics. So let's take the scoreboard off and let's go to our schedule of upcoming games. We can take that off. We can turn our bug on in the top right-hand corner with our basketball scoreboard. We can turn those off and go to a player comparison, right? All of this is able to be done just using the different buttons on the stream deck. And that is one way that you are able to drive your graphics. So I'm gonna show you something that I built using our API. I'm gonna come over here to this lower third, open this up in my browser. And this is a wildly basic user interface that kind of does everything you need in Captivate. Right here, I can update graphics. I can update everything I need. So when I click on get all titles, it's going to show me everything that I have available to me in my project. When I click on that sports player comparison, that graphic is gonna go away. And then when I click on my lower third, that graphic is going to come up. If I want to change the name of this graphic, Jacob Bernick, New Blue, click on Update Name and Title, and then that graphic is going to update. We've talked a little bit about how you can use Captivate to integrate into a stream deck, to control your graphics, to control your scoreboards. We've talked a little bit about how you can use our API to create custom workflows that can integrate into any tool that you might need. But let's talk a little bit about everyone's favorite switcher we've got over here with our ATEM. Uh, allowing you to switch in between all of your different camera sources, bring your graphics in and deliver a full live stream production uh, using this device. We're quite familiar with our friends over at Blackmagic uh, and ATEMS, so we integrated directly into this product. You'll even see right here, we have a, its own selection item, a Blackmagic Design ATEM, and now you can see it is connected, right? I've got it connected via USB-C, and now I can select the workflow that I wanna use. So you can use a downstream keying workflow where we're sending still images to the ATEM overlaying on top of the ATEM's output. You can select upstream chroma keying, which is going to send video to the ATEM via HDMI, SDI, uh, and then the ATEM can deliver that final output, right? So if you wanna control the graphics directly in the ATEM, this is the way to do it. And then we also have a media capture option. So if you wanted to just send the, uh, the ATEM output appears in Captivate as that media input source, and we will handle the final output. So if you wanna tie specific ATEM transition effects into Captivate transitions, you can do that using this option. So these are the ATEM transitions that you can configure so that when you press these buttons instead of this one, you will select maybe Stinger 5 transition as well, right? So it's just going to tie them all together so that the transitions from your ATEM are actually calling the transitions from Captivate. And again, this just allows you to get much more custom with the transitions that you are able to use. 
And now that the two pieces are connected, I can come back over here into my ATEM software control. And just to illustrate, right, now all of those graphics, my basketball scoreboard, my bug, my sports comparison, my schedule announcement graphics are available as options for graphics that I can turn on and off directly from my ATEM. Captivate, we've focused on its graphics and data capabilities today, right? I've, I've hinted at some other capabilities that we have uh, I'll just quickly show our video switcher up here. So as you can see, right, I'm streaming this basketball game over OBS, receiving that feed into Captivate as NDI. And then I've got myself right down here in this little window where I now have a video switcher within Captivate. So if you want to bring in multiple video sources and switch between them in Captivate, you have that ability. We also have basic instant replay functionality right here. So I can turn on any instant replays, uh, choose however many cameras I want to use, choose how long it should be, select what graphics it should use in and out of a transition, and then be able to grab any amount of time across that instant replay uh, to show in my production, right? So if I come up to instant replay and I click on enable instant replay, now I can navigate and you can see right here, I'm navigating and grabbing that amount of time and it will play back in slow motion when I put it into production. As you can see, Captivate solves a wide variety of problems for every live production. Whether you need improved and enhanced data-driven graphics or a full production control room, Captivate can slot in as the tool you need. For more information, please visit onesourcevideo.com or contact your local authorized reseller. Thanks so much for watching. Now's the time to level up with cutting-edge graphics and seamless integration. For a limited time, when you purchase select Blackmagic Design ATEM products, you'll get six months of new Blue Captivate broadcast for free. Choose from popular ATEM models like the ATEM Mini Pro, ATEM Mini Pro ISO, ATEM SDI, and ATEM SDI Pro ISO. Unlock 16 channels of unlimited live graphics that will captivate your audience with real-time data integration for live updates plus dynamic tickers, scoreboards, and custom API integration. Everything you need for sports, news, and live events. Pair it with your Blackmagic Design ATEM switcher, and you'll get pro-grade graphics, real-time data, and total customization, all in one easy-to-use package. This offer is only available for a limited time, so act fast. Upgrade your production today with Blackmagic Design and NewBlue. And if you want to learn more, be sure to check out onesourcevideo.com or visit your local reseller.